so my name is Natalie Olivares, and um, the, how we became fostering was uh, growing up, I had a cousin who was adopted by my aunt who fostered many kids. And uh, she always made me promise to either be <laughs> to either be Catholic or to foster. And I chose to foster. Uh, so when I met my husband, um, I told him, I said, before we can even date each other, uh, we need to come to an agreement. This is a desire that I have, and I want to eventually adopt one day. And he said, okay. So he agreed, and we moved forward with our... Uh, we move forward with our, you know, dating. And then uh, we, you know, had one child and then decided to start fostering. And that's how we started our fostering journey. Um, it was very tough. Uh -huh. uh, back at our, our last agency, um, I'm a big advocate for kids. I will lay my life down for any given child. Um, Kids will always come first in my life. I will live for the kids that I have in my home. I will live for my kids' friends. Um, I, am, I am basically that mom. Uh, and I did advocate for one of my kids who, who brought up some issues. And um, that child was in a different home at the time. And I kind of had to fight within the agency to be able to keep that child in a safe place. And um, I had to fight my own agency. And that's when I realized something's wrong here. Uh, we're not all in the same boat for the same reason. And that's where my heart changed for them. Because I'm telling you, I go into everything wholeheartedly. Everything, everything, everything we do is wholeheartedly. And I will give my all but I felt that it was not appropriate. It was not, what was going on with that specific child in that other home was not safe. So I had to fight people within my own agency to keep a child safe. And that's when I decided we had to go. Um, it was a lot of, mm, I don't wanna put anybody any agency to look bad. Mm -hmm. um, I did refer families to them back when I was there. And the way, it's like a bondage once they have you there at that agency. There's still families there that feel like I'm afraid to leave because they're afraid to be punished on their way out. Because you have a lot to lose. Mm -hmm. you, you love these kids that are in your home and their tactic is you need to give up all those kids in order to be able to leave the agency. Mm -hmm. That's not how it should work. But that's, you know, their tactic that they have and they use. So it took us a few years to get out of there. It did, it honestly did. When we first decided to leave, um, we were in the middle of an adoption for our second adoption. And it was, they did tell us we had to give up our baby but we were already in the middle of adoption, so we couldn't really leave. Uh, so it was just, it was a mess. It was, it, was a, it was a mess there. And no, I would not recommend anybody to go there. We fostered for about six, seven years, about six, seven, between six and eight years. Uh, we fostered with them. And then there came a point when we needed to change agencies. We were not done fostering or we weren't, done, you know, with what we're called to do. So uh, we searched for a few different agencies and uh, we ended up with five acres. <laughs> I, you know, I gotta say, truly, honestly, Yvonne. Yvonne was she is the one who just like caught my, like everything. She was just, she didn't try making us do anything, making us come over. She said, come to our orientation, check us out. Uh, and Yvonne was 
I say the face of Five Acres. She is that initial person and Yvonne is just a different, she's a different person. She's, she's right where she needs to be, yeah. So <laughs> we came to her orientation and being that we had quite a few years of experience, I just love Yvonne, <laughs> I can't. Um, being that we had quite an experience and we had already had so many kids placed in the home and such an experience, um, Yvonne did uh, during her training, you know, there, when we started the training with her. So we started the orientation, we started the training. I had a lot of questions because I wanted to know the difference of where we're coming from and what we're coming into because I was very fearful. I was very, very fearful uh, and I did express a lot of fear. Um, uh, that she told me, so Yvonne told me to be quiet <laughs> because I was going to scare everyone else away. Um, so, so she told me that, Shh, or else I'm going to put you in the closet because you're going to scare all these families away. We had a good group of, you know, resource families wanting to become resource families. And um, so, uh, but Yvonne's humor about everything and just the way she is overall, um, I would honestly say, so I did tell Yvonne many of times that, I've brought it up a lot of times. I told her, you know, I've never told her one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Yvonne is a different person for me because of the fact that coming from that agency with so much fear and so much unknown and so much I had already experienced so much, the, the, the loss and the, the empty promises. And I had already experienced so much that I was holding in so many emotion for years because the agency didn't help us through it. So Yvonne did this one where she sat everyone in a group and uh, one by one, and I remember this day, she sat everyone one by one uh, and you had to tell your story. And everyone had a, okay, you know, one person went through divorce and um, as the story keeps going and then, you know, it starts to get ugly in the middle of the room because it, it comes to a, like, an emotional breakdown of the loss of one baby that was promised to us and this baby had no contact and this baby was on the road for adoption and so on that day i remember just letting go emotionally letting go of all ties that i had from this baby that i raised for a year and a half with no other parents involved no other family and it it caused so much emotion on my family that I, I was depressed. Um, I couldn't get out of bed for days. Um, and my little girls didn't even go to school for three months out of the year because of the severe emotion that was going on in the home. And until that day with Yvonne, I had never been past it. I had never got to that, you know, in that lesson she gave the grievance and the loss and the, you have to go through all this in order to get to the end. And she didn't know, but she was a part of that healing process. And that's why we stuck through the trainings and we finished and went through with Five Acres because it was just a completely different feel. The support with Five Acres is phenomenal. It's amazing. It's, I don't even know how to explain the difference in the professionalism that Five Acres has. Uh, and I'm not one to make any other agency look bad because we're all doing for different reasons and different purposes and um but five acres does recognize and they do hear and understand what we as the foster adoptive families go through every day 
that is the difference. That is the honest difference between any given agency because we did go to Homes of Hope. Um, we went to an orientation with them during the time of searching. Uh, we did them. We went to David and Margaret. Uh, we went to, we looked into a few, a few, and we ended up, because of Yvonne, we ended up. And I don't say that. She doesn't say anything to make you. No, she does not say anything to make you. She just says, come to our orientation. And just her whole overall, the way she is, and it just, like, I'm not saying that, like, it's only her that keeps us there. Like, it's just the overall, like, they're a team. So they're a team. I feel I'm a part of their team. Like, I, I kind of know Angie. I kind of know, but I don't know them. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we started all of this right before the pandemic. <laughs> so, you know, we didn't really get to, we went to one Christmas party pre-approval, and then we became approved. And then a few months after that, the shutdown happened. <laughs> So we haven't really been there that long, but yet we feel, mm -hmm. we feel and we can honestly see their honestness, their, their purpose. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm telling you, we've had quite an experience overall, just the whole entire from foster care. Um, so it took us six months. It took us six months to get approved, to go through that whole process, being that we're transferring from one agency to another. So a lot of stuff had, we had to redo a lot of things over again, but yet uh, just transfer our file and then do an addendum to that file. Mm -hmm. So, because we wanted to be possible adoptive families still. So um, they had to, you know, add to all of that because we're going into a new agency. Mm -hmm. So, um, our, uh, we get a first placement about six, uh, six months with, within days though, like, because we're doing infants. So mm -hmm. infants tend to like, you get calls all the time for infants. Um, so we get a call for an infant and I'm telling you, we're wholeheartedly about what we do. Uh, this infant came to us unknown, unknown COVID. So this is pre COVID. This is March of the beginning, COVID shut down March 13th, 14th, yeah. and we got him the end of Feb the tail end of February, about the last week of February. Uh, he came to us extremely sick. Uh, it was not RSV. It was not, uh, they did lumbar puncture after lumbar puncture. Um, we were just, you know, he had spike fever of 104. It took us to the emergency room. The emergency didn't know what to do because it was an infant. Transferred us to Long Beach uh, Children's Hospital. We stood there for over a week. Um, uh, no parents found. Uh, he was dropped off at DCFS by a friend of a friend of a friend of the moms. And so we have no contact. We hold no ed rights. We hold no medical rights. We, but we're there where my husband was there diligently like he stood there from morning to night like if he was his own child um so uh that first little boy was an infant we were hoping that he would stay with us because he did end up staying about six to eight months and then they that was like after two hospital stays for a week at each time and uh it was just it's quite an experience so then um my husband is the one who's doing all this work because I have to stay home with the kids. So my husband's the one who's, you know, attaching to this infant and they find a dad. <laughs> so then he got reunified with a dad. And then just from there, we've just had placement after placement after placement. Uh, we have had a placement for, she was three days placed and they picked her up at midnight. And I was like, who's knocking at our door? <laughs> you know, who's knocking at our door at midnight? She was, he was, she was detained at midnight. So that same midnight worker was on the case still. So he had found dad. And so that was a, you know, she left. And uh, we did our first teenager here at this agency. Um, so between that year and a half, we've had about 12 different children in the home. And then um, in the, you know, in this whole process of, I'm going to give it two years. Let's say I've been here for two years. Um, we did get one placement 
of a newborn girl, but at the time I did have a four month old girl, but her plan was reunification. So her same county worker, I had an open space and she had called me. So I, I like to build relationships with the ER workers mm -hmm. so that they kind of keep me in the back of their mind, okay. like, oh, Natalie. Uh, so uh, she called me and she said, I have a newborn girl. No, no, that's not how my story goes. <laughs> so Mireya says, hey, Natalie, I'm planning to place a newborn boy in your home. And I say, yes, a newborn boy, I'm so excited, I need another boy. So I, we plan for the baby to be placed the following week. But during that time frame, I got a call from that county worker and she said, I have a newborn girl who the mom walked away. She gave birth and walked away and I said, okay, like whoever can fill the space first, let's do it. So I called me today and I said, look, this is the situation that we're in, but this baby, you know, mom walked away and we're a little bit more guaranteed. And so Mireya said, okay. She said, okay, that other placement didn't go through. Let's go through with this one. Natalie, it's your home. That's the exact words she said. It is your home. I can't tell you what to take and what not to take in. So you want her, let's, let's place her. So we went through with the placement uh, the following day. She was two days old. And we will be celebrating her first birthday on the 25th, 26th, the 26th. And uh, we're in the process of adopting her. The difference though, five acres is real. They're real with you. They're not, they don't give you those empty promises. They don't give you the false. It's real. It's not, it's not, oh, this one's adoptable. Or, oh, she's going to be adoptable. No, it's kind of a, Mireya is up front with you. She says, this is all I know. And this is the only information I have. And you go from there based on what you feel in your heart. Like I do everything, well, <laughs> I do everything based on my heart. I, I will go with what my stomach is telling me. I'll go with what my heart says. And uh, she's beautiful, she's thriving, uh, she's amazing. Uh, she has no name. <laughs> and we get to be able to name her. And uh, everything's just been going great as far as her story, but they're all different. Uh, every story is different, every child's different, and um, you have to be willing to say, like, yeah, bring them. Let's get this job done. Let's, you know, get through it, and whatever the outcome is, it is what it is. And um, I support reunification as well, not only adoption, yeah. My desire in the beginning was, I want to adopt, I want to adopt, because that's the purpose of us going into fostering. But when we weren't given the right information in the beginning, um, we didn't know. We didn't know. Um, so when I do tell new families and I do explain, like, I don't mind mentoring anybody. Um, I will reach out. I will help. I will try from my knowledge to try to give you a little bit of insight of what it really is. Um, I, will, I will be very upfront and honest now. Not always does it go into adoption. Um, you have to wait it out, but give them the care and the love that they need as if they're your child or going up for adoption. Just give them that because that's, that's what they need. No matter how old they are, teenage, that's what they need. Just find, the way I do it is I find the need. As soon as, you know, the child is placed, I don't attack. I right away, let's sit down. Let's sit down and let's just talk. You don't want to talk? Don't talk. But I'm going to get to know you because you're sitting there in the same room as me, alone. So I'm going to get to know you. Uh, even as a baby, as a toddler, like, let's sit on the floor. Like, I'm going to play with these toys. You don't have to. But when you're ready, we're here. Mm -hmm. And then you find their need because every child does have a need. Every child has a need. And you just go from there and try to foster and care and meet that need for that particular child in the moment. Um, I'm not going to lie. My birth girls, they have needs too. Uh, they've been through this journey with us since day one. Um, 
Now those are whole different, they have to tell their own story, their own experience. I'm sure they don't share everything with me of the feelings because a lot of it is feelings. A lot of it leads back to the desire of your heart. Um, yeah, all they ever wanted was to have a sibling. They enjoy having kids. They enjoy having those younger siblings. Um, but I'm sure they've experienced on their own. You know, it's a lot. It's a lot for somebody to do it not as a job. Because um, it, it is work, but it's not, it's not a job. It's not a job. Um, so I can only imagine what my girls, how they feel. Um, we do sit around the dinner table and we talk about the children and our memories with them. And we do act out the way certain kids behaved or certain things that they did or uh, what the, the little things that stuck with us. And there is a few that didn't stay here long enough to even remember them, but we remember their names. Um, every few months we sit down and it's to help them process what we do. Um, we'll go through a whole list of naming all the kids so that they can always know and remember that it is a difference that they made. It is something, you know, it's their work too. It's their, you know, they're sharing their home. They're sharing their mom. They're sharing their family. Um, so we, it's all inclusive. Um, our girls enjoy doing it. Uh, and <laughs> I had my older one went through a phase of family everything. She would wear clothing that said family first. On picture day, literally, if I let her, it, she would have wore the shirt that said family first. She did wear the shirt. I think she wore it. it. said family first. And if it was up to her to have put all the kids' pictures on her shirt, she would have preferred to do that. Um, but that's just the difference of, you know, a job and enjoyment and, you know, their family, their family. So this is me recruiting. <laughs> uh, I would say, you know, you're thinking about it. Uh, you don't know until you've actually taken that step forward. And just do it. Just try it. Just, it's for the child. It, you have that kind of like, oh, I want to, I want to. Try it. Try it. Uh, especially with a good agency. Uh, find yourself a good agency that you're going to connect with and first always in your mind put I'm doing this for the child not for myself I'm doing this to provide them a home and to give them what they need and when you get discouraged and when you're kind of like the questionable like oh maybe I'm not I'm not doing the right thing or I shouldn't have done this it's okay reach out find somebody Find somebody who is willing to help you through it. But fostering with the idea of adopting as well, um, it's a good thing. It's a, it's a good thing. Just hang in there. I've told one family before, just it, it's not always going to be the first kid. It's not always going to be the first placement. Uh, you just continue to care for them and continue to give them everything that you can. And just try it just just try try it out and you'll know if it's for you or not um but connect connect with a good group of people and always always have the support you always have to have the support um but it's a journey it's a journey and it's a it's a it's a joy <laughs> it's it's a joy to do um so i would say try it out yeah i love five acres i am enjoying being with them um thank i want to thank everybody who works for five acres or is involved at five acres or has some kind of little component within five acres i do appreciate i appreciate five acres overall i appreciate everybody that's a part of the team and um just i want to thank i want to thank five acres for 
the joy that I have experienced there with them. Um, I don't want to sound like I'm the only person who has such a good, you know, relationship. But, um, but I do. I appreciate. I really, really appreciate. Sincerely appreciate. Mm -hmm.